this underwater scene, uh, we shot it at the real beginning of the shooting, and it was the most difficult one. I suppose everybody was worried about the scene underwater because it's not normal to be underwater. You can imagine. The actors, I was always afraid they would uh, they would have a lack of air or there would be a problem, and so it was very difficult for them because they had to stay very long underwater and swim, and it was really a challenge. I mean, uh, uh, the actors were really great underwater. Quiet, please. Uh, everybody, be quiet, please, when we shoot. Quiet. Thank you. And with Jean-Pierre, we said, okay. ...of having something in town and close by with plenty of cover sets in case there's a problem, and the studio gets the second largest tank in the studio zone. It was shot on, uh, I believe it was stage 16 at Fox, and they had actually dug out the stage and built this major set, I think it was four, 12 or 14 foot deep, and 100 by 50 foot. They converted an entire soundstage, which is vast, into this big swimming pool and then dressed it as, as, as if it were a kitchen that was flooded. The, the pool was about half a football field, okay, on the lot, inside a stage, and they rigged all that light, both underwater and above the water. It was the perfect shooting scenario. They built all the sets right in there. It couldn't have been a, a better setup in terms of us, in terms of having a working space. And never once was anybody in danger of that combination of electricity and water. I was astounded by that. All well, the underwater scenes, for instance, was a long, long process. With, there was a lot of preparation uh, for this scene, weeks of preparation, and to train the actors, to train the crew, to light. This was a very big challenge. And I didn't I had a fantastic um, underwater camera, uh, ca cameraman, director of photography also, but um, I actually designed the lighting of the underwater with the... Uh, with, you know, always with the input of my, my uh, underwater cameraman, um, Peter Romano. Darius was really into fluorescent lighting, so I, um, in my little widget shop here, came up with our first underwater fluorescence, which I, I'm not sure that, uh, that this is 100%, but I believe, at least for me, in terms of Hollywood, what's going on was the first time underwater fluorescents were specifically put in the water uh, for a feature film. And um, you can see that in all the behind the scenes footage. We built actually light boxes and threw in four four foot tubes and had them all around. It gave a beautiful soft light, especially when we were lighting Sigourney. Obviously fluorescents are a much softer light and they can be controlled a lot more than, uh, than dealing with a, you know, like a 1200 HMI, which would be a lot of direct light coming at us. We'd have to bounce that. This gave us a great soft light source that we could move around the set and not take up a lot of space. We could put them right next to camera. And I went under, underwater myself, which is a, um, tot not totally a new thing, but um, quite new. I, I mean, I spent a long time underwater. I was operating a second camera, and it was very exciting for both for Jean-Pierre and I to do, and Peter let me operate that uh, second camera. It was really cool, it was fun, really fun to do. Darius also wanted to get in the water, and he shot second camera uh, on a number of, uh, a number of scenes. He, he really wanted that hands-on, I guess, and as you know, a cinematographer for a film, you really have to get in there and feel it and, and feel the emotion of what you're doing, and, and he was right there. He was very good. Underwater, everything is long. The big, big problem with underwater is communication. If you have a good communication with, between the underwater and the above-water uh, station, where the director is, sometimes the DP or all the, the, all the crew, the, the rest of the crew, and, and the electrician and all that, and the underwater, if you have a good communication, it goes more smoothly and you can achieve more and more interesting shots. You know, Jean-Pierre sketches out on the storyboard ideally what he'd like to see. We talk to our uh, DP, Darius, and Pete Romano, our underwater DP, and we basically block the shot out like we would on land. Frame right is over here, frame left is right over here. Within the frame, we want to see people swimming from left to right or right to left. We want the camera to pan either way. And we go down there and we practice it. We set up uh, what's uh, called a hookah rig. And basically, that's a long air hose to a, re to a mouthpiece, which is connected to uh, to an air tank above the surface, and the actors will go on frame right and breathe, and they'll try and relax and normalize their breathing so that they can hold their breath for a sufficient amount of time in order to cross the scene. Then above top, uh, Ernie Orsatti gets on the underwater mic, 
and he'll say, you know, six, five, four, three, two, one, action, and the people will do what's you know required of them: swim and do whatever type of uh, stuff that Jean Pierre wants him to do. Two, one, and background. Go, go, fire! Cut. Everything Cut. Was Everything was great, but the rocket didn't go. Cut. 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 In terms of the actual shoot, I believe we went on for three weeks in that stage. And it was day after day uh, trying to get through those shots. And I know it was hard on everybody, especially talent, uh, because they could have no scuba gear down there. They were all holding their breath for the shots. So a safety or stunt person would bring them to the, the set and uh, they would just sit there with their mask on, breathing air. When everybody was all set up, then they would lose their mask, lose the air, and then we would commence shooting. I didn't think I would do it. When I first came here and we, uh, before the shooting, we had some training in a swimming pool, and um, I was pretty bad. I mean, I, I couldn't breathe properly, and uh, well, I finally did it, and I'm, I'm pretty glad. They really were careful about, I mean, it almost, you know, it almost made you want to go, what, what's up here? I mean, you know, because you read it on the page and, you know, they swim from here to here and there's an alien chasing him in this shot. And, and, and then suddenly you're invited to participate in this safety mindset. And they're taking huge chunks of time and great pains to prepare you for this. Uh, it was complicated by the fact that it was a closed set, meaning we had ceilings overhead. Also, we had uh, quite a number of actors who were not scuba certified. Some were, some weren't. But uh, that also, you know, adds a degree of safety and, uh, and sort of, I guess you could call it, uh, confusion to what would, what would be happening. I got the part and um, was called and told that, uh, that the rehearsal process would involve meeting with a uh, diving instructor in pools in the LA area. I can't remember where we went, but somewhere in the city, somewhere in the suburbs. And that's where I met uh, Ron, Dominique. I did more of my training with Leland for some reason, I guess because our schedules just coincidentally um, jibed. But we, were, we went to swimming pools all over town, like four or five times. We met at these pools and we learned how to swim underwater and, uh, and how to use um, scuba equipment Basically, it's a lot of sessions. I, I think we had 10 to 15 water safety sessions before we even got to this tank. Then once we're at this tank, we had about two and a half weeks of training. And uh, you know, our dive master, who's a certified instructor, has led everybody through the process of basically scuba diving, but with much less time than your normal scuba diving course. I mean, we were in that tank for, what, how, long, how many weeks were we in that tank? Four weeks? Four weeks. We were supposed to be in there, we were one, I think. And we ended up being in this tank that was, what were we, 15 feet underwater? 15 feet underwater um, and, and, in, and in sets that you couldn't swim to the surface on. We spent the first month in a pool. We spent the first month like 10 feet below water with no, with a roof over us so that you can't, couldn't just go up. We were so dependent upon safety divers. They would be down there with your, uh, with your hookah to give to you um, at the end of a scene. They have to actually take a breath on frame right and then swim all the way through and grab another breath. And for some people, that's, that's a lot of work. I mean, it's, it's not normal. People aren't used to doing that. And so, for instance, let's say we had to swim from there to there. Um, we would get down, a hookah would be dropped. Each one had a color on it for, for whoever, you know, pink for Sigourney, red for Leland, whatever. And uh, we would get down there. We'd breathe on the hookahs. We could hear over the microphone, Jean-Pierre was up outside of the water on the soundstage. And, um, and we, I mean, they, everybody ready? Yes, everybody's ready. And then um, we would have to take one final breath of air. They'd pull the hookahs up, um, and we'd have to allow for all the bubbles to clear. And this is kind of a tense moment now, because you've got nine actors or something at some points down there. And you're virtually blind. Probably the, the biggest obstacle to overcome in the underwater filming was getting five, six actors together to do a take because everybody was on their own schedule for that, certainly holding their breath, no fins, no mask, no air. It's somewhat of a survival you know, position you're putting people into. So to get those takes was probably the most difficult.
we depended on our, our safety divers who were all down there with breathing apparatuses and, and masks for us for, for that moment when the director said cut. When they would yell cut, you are now completely out of air and you know completely depleted of energy and you need oxygen immediately. They're down there with tanks on their backs with an extra hookah and uh, an extra mouthpiece and they would be there. You couldn't see them, you'd swim and they would stop you, grab you and put the mouthpiece in your mouth. Then you'd breathe, then you'd grab onto him, the two of you would swim around and come up to the surface. And um, we did that for four weeks. At first, it was terrifying. At first, it was the scariest thing ever. You know, when you see your main, uh, main stars, main actresses, uh, uh, Sigourney and, um, and Winona Ryder on the water and all the other actors, Dominique and all the others, um, it's just uh, scary to, to... It's scary more for them, because you don't think, you know, you're... You are, Underwater, it's not so. I mean, we're not in a dangerous, such dangerous position. The technician, I don't remember, it was quite safely organized. Well, Winona, I mean, certainly a fine actress, um, and I've worked with her a number of times underwater, even on Mr. Deeds. I believe that uh, early in life, Winona had a near drowning experience.